Okay, I'm removing my suburban propane furnace in favor of a Chinese diesel heater. This thing has given me a lot of trouble. I've had this thing in and out of here probably three times. I'm sick of working on it. So I'm going to get something else. Um, these are like a box in a box. So this outer box can stay put and you can remove the guts of it. We'll just, you know, there's just a couple screws down there, unhook the propane, unhook the wires, and it should just slide right out. It's fighting me right now. So I forgot there's a screw on the exhaust that you have to take out. So I took that out and now we'll just take it out. It's hanging up right here. This lip. I got some cardboard down here so it doesn't scratch up my floor. Sharp. Metal, wearing gloves, lots of sharp edges. There it is. Piece of crap. Uh, this is going to be going up for grabs after I get my Chinese diesel heater going. Um, making sure I don't need it. This um, may work with some maintenance. I hate working on it. I'm tired of it, done with it. So, uh, you know, if you're one of my viewers and you're uh, in the area and you want a, uh, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 30 kW propane suburban furnace, uh, let me know. All right, here's a mock up of this mounting bracket under cabinet mounting bracket that uh, I've made for this diesel heater I've almost thrown in the towel on this project a couple times just due to various complications that I'm having with it but um, uh, I'm gonna press on here see what I can do so here's a shot of this uh, angle turret plate installed under the cabinet it features a heat shield up here to try and you know keep the heat from rising up into the wood in the bottom of the cabinet here um, there's the suburban ducts over there already have those holes in the side of my coach and so I'm going to great lengths to reuse those instead of cutting another hole in my floor or further modifying the bus. The big design constraint here in this particular situation is the height of the exhaust port which is the top suburban port back there that one's the exhaust and it's got a little lip on the inside edge of it presumably so that any condensate that comes through the exhaust will go out instead of coming in and I have to have a slight drop from this exhaust port to that one and so I've had to mount this thing 
as high as possible. And I've even had to modify this turret plate a little bit to make that work. I'm not super happy with it. Um, it would have been a lot better if this, um, the existing holes were lower. Um, it would have worked a lot nicer then. Um, I thought about flipping those over, you know, taking this guy and just flipping it over um, on the outside of the bus. And I went and looked at it. And that won't really work because the top one's got a rain shield on it. You know, there's a little a little hood on it to keep water from running in, you know, as it comes down the side of the RV. So, you know, I thought that was important and I didn't want to lose that functionality. I've wrapped the exhaust uh, with exhaust wrap. Um, I've got an IR gun where I can examine the heat and you know see if anything's getting too hot or whatever with that and also um, I got a portable carbon monoxide sensor so that I can you know probe around there and make sure that all the carbon monoxide is getting out and none of it's getting back in so that's what we're trying here those are the uh, furnace holes I want to reuse. Well, I installed this thing in my bus and it was smoking because of all the stuff that has to burn off of it. And so I've set it up here at the edge of my shop and I'm going to let it run for a few hours and burn all the stink off of it. You can kind of hear what this thing sounds like, you know, the pumps ticking there. This is just mocked up. You're not, you're not supposed to run it like that, obviously. This thing's starting to ramp up here. I'm going to take some temperature measurements from it here once it's going. But that's my kind of old bracket situation I got going on there. Okay, I've had this thing running for a couple hours. And I just thought I'd show some temperature ratings. Um, I have seen 500 degrees like this in some of This plate here is cool to the touch. Now, I'm not running it
this thing does put out a fair amount of carbon monoxide at its exhaust, which obviously would be external to the vehicle. Um, no detectable carbon monoxide coming from the passenger compartment ducting. This reading we're getting here is just because I'm in an open air area that's part of the main. This will start to alert at 25. I went over there and held it by the exhaust and hit quite a bit. Um, let's do it for you. The outlet of this is a dangerous amount of carbon monoxide at the exhaust, obviously. Uh, quite a bit more than with a propane furnace, I would think. So my propane water heater is on right now, and I just thought I would uh, hold this up to the exhaust and just compare the amount of carbon monoxide generated by propane combustion versus diesel. controller set up here. This thing gives a lot more information than the stock controller. It's got Wi-Fi and stuff too. It tells you how many watts the glow plug is using, fan RPM, battery voltage. Nice. Now it says it's igniting, which is correct. Now it's showing that it's ignited and it's indicating the, uh, the fuel consumption there. 0 0.1 liters so far. I'm going to change this to Fahrenheit here soon. Okay, I got it installed in the bus. I'm just doing some test runs here. The ductwork's not installed yet. Uh, just checking things out. Primarily um, looking at this uh, back here.
So I think it's going to work. So I got my afterburner set up with my home assistant so I can see you know, I can control my temperature here turn it on and off and then this shows the status of the furnace uh, running we've used almost there's a liter of fuel uh, this is the burn rate 427 milliliters per hour span, fan speed and then the glow plug current those are the stats I've got showing right now so I got the style of heater that's got these four outlets on them and I believe those pipes are about 42 millimeters ID um, maybe they're about 44 OD. I don't know. I measured the ID of it. And I discovered that it mates up quite well to two or uh, one and a half inch ABS. Um, I was going to make a fitting there. Uh, I was going to 3D print a fitting because I couldn't find one. Uh, but my printer has uh, got some issues at the moment, so I had to do that, which actually works quite well, surprisingly. And it's pretty easy to run. Essentially, I'm using ABS, one and a half inch ABS, as the duct work for this system. Now, I am going to have to make um, a grill for that where it exits but um, you know this this stuff is it's really easy to work with and it's cheap and I think it's gonna work nice some of these ducks get pretty dang hot when this thing's cranking I've run temps as high as 190 on this, these uh, ducks. They're foil line. It cools off quite a bit, you know, as it gets further away. So I designed in CAD an adapter that will transition from the 42 millimeter flexible duct that came with this four nozzle heater to one and a half inch ABS, which has got um, an OD of about 1.9 inches. So this piece will enable me to attach those together nicely. And that noise you hear in is my 3D printer because I'm printing that adapter uh, from the duct, the 42 millimeter duct to the uh, ABS. Okay, so I had to make some revisions because this print failed. Curves and stuff and this one I've had to revise so I'm going more with um, something like this. I'm using this as inspiration and I'm making it flat so here's what I've come up with. That's what it's going to look like. I 
and I'll just run a, a screw down through the middle of it to help it rotate. So we'll see here. So I've run into a complication with part of my plan here. This duct here, I looked it up online. This stuff's only rated to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's plastic inside and out. And I've measured that with the IR gun and I've seen 195 out of this. So I don't trust this stuff in here. So my plan was to remove this and use my ABS pipe through there. Well, the problem is this thing is mashed underneath several things, including the edge of the counter and uh, the water heater and a few other odds and ends, and I can't get it out of there. And, uh, you know, this goes into areas that I don't have access to. And that's the bedroom heat. So, yeah. A little bit of a complication maybe means no heat directly in the bedroom. No ducted heat to the bedroom. Kind of annoying. So that is one of the adapters. So that goes from the flexible 44 millimeter pipe to one and a half inch ABS. So these furnaces run quite a bit hotter than a typical furnace. That air that's coming out of there is 190 degrees. Mighty hot. Not like in this workaround here. This workaround is because I have four ducts three that I can run, so I've stuffed two of them in this metal duct, which is 150 degrees outside temp there. These black ones, I just got a 200 there, yeah, so look at that, 200 degrees. So here's one of those 3D printed ducts installed with vent covers, I guess you could say. It rotates. At this point, it's only, uh, you know, well, I guess we got a hundred there for a second. So yeah, that's totally acceptable at the end of a long run there. It's taken several iterations to arrive at uh, event design that uh, I'm happy with this is probably the third version here it's a little bit bigger so we'll see how this works out if it does i'm probably going to redo that other one i was showing you so here's a better look at the latest vent design yeah it's two pieces and then there's a small screw it goes through the nut and washer. Hold on. So this this can rotate. But it has, you know, it has some stiffness to it too, so it'll stay where you put it. And there's what that vent looks like installed. It's 
kind of shiny. It's not horrible. I mean, it looks better in person than it does on camera. Because those lines are so small you can hardly see them. From a normal distance, you're way up here. So this is what my fuel installation looks like here. Um, so this is in my my propane bay on my 4106 bus conversion. So this is a vented bay. And the diesel fuel tank, the main tank is right on the other side of this wall. Um, I have not had the nerve to drill into that just yet. Um, so this is what I'm doing right now to set up for the trip. Um, it uses so little fuel and I carry an emergency can of diesel in here anyways. Um, so I'm just using this and ultimately when I have time and inclination to do so, I will go through this wall and tap into my main tank. But basically, you know, you've got the pump and the filter and you know, it uses this very small, I wanna say nylon hose, but you can use whatever you want before the pump as long as it's not too big. And you, you do have to use these kind of funky little joiners. I thought when I first saw that, that that was pretty, pretty funky, but I can actually see why it is and it seals up, why they do that and it seals up totally tight. But this line, you know, it travels on the top of this bay and up into there where the furnace is. But that line is a specific size and because this is a piston type pump, every stroke of the piston is delivering a specific amount of fuel and it has to have, you know, this small diameter hose to dispense the correct amount of fuel into the, into the furnace. But that's what I'm doing for now. And, um, I think that'll be fine. It's important to put a screen over your suburban furnace exhaust. There's all sorts of these available online on Amazon and whatnot. Um, usually there's some springs that hold it on. My springs are rusted and gone a long time ago, so I'm using some safety wire. They have some that are like two round, round meshes. Um, I think that style would be a little better than this style. Um, but yeah, keep the bees and yellow jackets and stuff from getting in there and making a nest. Don't want that. So there's the finished installation there. And this is our afterburner. It's right next to the couch, so you can... Uh, so you can see what that looks like back here. But the idea is, is that when you're sitting here in the couch, that you can you can fiddle with this if you want. I've used 2.48 liters. Showing my battery voltage as well, which um, I'm using on my home assistant. So I'm actually using that to trend my house battery voltage there. And um, I guess I'm trending the inside temp. There's two sensors on this thing, and I think I'm going to put one of them outside. So as usual, I'll publish my source files for stuff. The links will be in the description below. And, uh, you know, if you need to make any of these parts or you need the files to set up um, MQTT 
with Afterburner and Home Assistant, um, you'll have that information as well. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you're having a good day. Please uh, smash that like button and uh, we'll see you next time.